afternoon, guys. Thanks for your patience. We will start with the broadcast section that's got no embargo, followed by two embargo sections, one for 10.30pm tonight and one for 10.30 on Saturday. No live tweeting during the broadcast section, please, and phones on silent. Uh, please indicate to me if you'd like to ask a question. We will try to get through as many people as possible. Apologies in advance if we don't get to you. Gary. Hello, Gary from Sky. Hello, any, mate. Any guesses as to what the first question is going to be about? No idea, mate. Good turnout, though. We, we had to cancel it last week. No one was interested in what I had to say, so it's obviously not about me. So go for it, bud. What's the latest with the Harry Kane? He's sitting at the airport currently waiting to fly to Munich. Yeah, look, fair to say, I, I don't have a blow-by-blow blow account of the whole thing, but uh, my understanding is that it's... Uh, you know, it's it's progressed to the point where it looks like it's going to happen, and that's kind of uh, um, that's all the information I kind of have at the moment. And and from that perspective, it at least gives us sort of some clarity. Um, unless something unforeseen happens, that we we move forward without Harry. You need it to happen, don't you? You're right, the current is important, so you can move forward. Whether it's done sooner rather than later, now we've reached that stage, I guess. No, I don't don't have feelings either way in terms of needing anything. It's just, like I said, from my perspective, it's just about understanding where we're at and where where the sort of um, status of it is. And the information I have at the moment is that the the deal is imminent. And um, like with all these things, obviously, until it happens, you you kind of uh, you know leave a little bit of leeway for yourself. But for the most part, um, you know, moving forward and, and certainly with training today and preparing for Brentford, we're, we're doing it without Harry. Tough decision for him in the end, it seems. How do you think he should be remembered? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess it's, it's best Harry speaks for himself in terms of the decision. But look, there's no doubt he's one of the greats of this football club, and that that doesn't change. You know, he's um, he's. Record speaks for itself. He's standing amongst our supporters. Stands for itself. Um, you know, um, I'm only you in the building, mate. But um, I'm certainly not a spokesman for um, this football club in the in the sense of you know proclaiming people's status. But I think it's fairly evident that uh, you know Harry Kane is he will will always be one of the greats of this football club. Uh, Eighty-five million pounds up to. I don't think there's a like for like replacement for Harry, mate. Um, Position-wise, oh, in terms of a striker, yeah. Um, no, look, again, we've been planning for this. Fair to say, for a while, you know. I, I think it doesn't take too much investigative work to to, to realise that. You know, this was going to happen. So we've been sort of planning for it to happen anyway. So a lot of our business up till now is with that in mind. So this doesn't change things dramatically from my perspective anyway, um, in terms of what we're trying to build. Um, so um, there's still movement in the squad, absolutely. Um, you know, we've still got a you know, fairly big squad that we need to move out, um, some players, and I think some players will seek opportunities elsewhere. And... Um, there's still, you know, what, uh, three or so weeks to go in the transfer window. So um, I think there'll still be movement, but that's not because, you know, Harry's gone. That That's always been in the plan. In terms of a 20 goals plus a season, man, have you given Premier League a list? Uh, I don't think it works that way, mate. Uh, look, it's not, um, you know, it's not my wife handing me a shopping list to go down and get some milk and bread for the kids. Uh, like I said, we've been, we've been sort of... You know, our whole strategy has been around the fact that, you know, Harry wasn't going to be around more than likely. So it's not like this is, we've had that for a powwow this morning and, like, geez, what do we do? We knew it was coming and we've been working towards that. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, we're, we're, we're preparing now for, for Brentford and, uh, you know, there won't be anyone incoming between now and Sunday. So that's where my focus is. Becky. Yeah, no, it's, it's good to get Mickey in, and uh, yeah, he's settled in well. Um, sort of, it's always uh, it's easy for me to say, but having just been through it myself, you know, the, the, 
it's not as just simple as them coming out and training. They've got to sell themselves off the field as well, and all these kind of things take time. But um, yeah, he's looked he's looked bright at training. Um, <coughs> Yeah, he's had a pre-season with Wolfsburg. He hasn't played 90 minutes yet, so it's fair to say, again, match conditioning-wise, he's probably not at the level. Um, but he's definitely available for the weekend. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll have a look at him. We, he trained today, he trained well today. Um, <coughs> excuse me, we've obviously got a, a session tomorrow, and then, you know, in terms of the team selection, I'll make some decisions um, after that. But um, he's available um, for, for selection. And any other injury concerns outside of the stuff? No, the, the, we've obviously got you know, some long-termers who, who um, kind of won't be available, but everyone else sort of who played the last two games, Shakhtar and Barcelona, um, apart from some minor knocks, they've all trained today. So, um, yeah, um, there's no one uh, that will we'll miss out from the guys who've kind of been involved recently. And how are you feeling about Brentford on Sunday? What kind of threat they pose? And do you feel you're set and ready? Well, I think I said yesterday we have to be ready. You can't, the league's not going to wait for us, so it starts Sunday. So we have to be ready for it. Um, yeah, obviously it's a, you know, it's a, it's a great test for us. Brentford um, away is, is tough for anybody in the league. Uh, they showed that last year, and I think you've seen growth in their team every year they've been in the Premier League. Um, yeah, you know, again they've, they've they've made some really astute signings to strengthen in the areas they need to, and um, it's going to be a great challenge for us. Um, you know, it's. It's a great physical challenge when you play Brentford. They work hard as a team. They're well organised. They're difficult to set pieces, and we've got to try and counter all that stuff. But also, um, from our perspective, try and play our football. We've been working hard on that in the pre-season, and this is our first chance to sort of um, start to lay some foundations. Okay, thank you. Sam. Hi, Ange. Um, I know you said that you've been sort of planning this summer, knowing this deal is likely to happen. But you know, when the news broke yesterday, was there the fear been accepted? Was there any part of you? thought Harry might say no, I want to stay. Did you, did you try and convince him to stay? This is his team, this is his home. I know Brian's a big club, but... Oh, again, again, like, you, I think if you're involved in the football business as long as I know, as I have, um, clubs aren't talking to each other unless the player knows about it. <laughs> we were negotiating with Wolfsburg for Mickey Van, Van Der Veen and then trying to figure out whether he wants to come to us. You know, all those kind of things are decided. So... Um, you know, those conversations had. I had a conversation with Harry the first day I arrived and, you know, he was upfront and honest and I was the same and, you know, you, you kind of get an indication there that he, he kind of made up his mind that if the clubs agreed that he would go, particularly if it was, you know, obviously his emphasis was before, before the first game. That was my preference as well. Um, and there's nothing been along the way that's sort of made me feel like there's anything other than this outcome. So, like I said, none of these things happen in isolation. You know, everyone's pretty clued in into what's going on. So, from my perspective, I hadn't received anything either from Harry or from the club or anyone else to suggest to me that anything had changed about his stance. And on James Madison, a lot of Spurs fans are, are happy to see him here at Tottenham. Was he a player that you wanted earlier on as soon as you, you got him? What you're expecting him to bring to this team? Yeah, I mean, he was, you know, probably one of the first pieces of business we did, yeah. I mean, he was available and, um, yeah, I was really excited to, to bring him into the group and knowing sort of what we needed to build here. And, and again, you know, in the back of my mind, knowing that, you know, if Harry was going to leave, that's a fair few goals walking out the door and you can't just replace that, I thought, with one player. And I think an area of the club that, you know, probably needed some bolstering was midfield threat in terms of goals and that's what... You know, matters provide some goals, assists, and and if we're going to sort of cover the fact that you know Harry's gone and all the goals are leaving with him, we can we can certainly try and spread that out, and 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 matters definitely um, you know provides that, and he's been brilliant since he's coming. To be fair, he's been outstanding, not just you know in the games, but in training and, and the way he's kind of embraced the club, and and um, you know the way he's kind of developed in the football uh, we want to play. And you sense that despite me, it's been. A- Negativity in particular last year, but do you feel as if you've, you know, despite Kengo, you've really sort of united all the fan base? And I think a lot of Spurs fans and new faces coming in, you know, you're, you're an optimistic guy, you're very enthusiastic. I think Spurs fans have, have really taken to you early on. Do you feel as if you kind of, you know, go on a slide early on and everyone seems really united going into the new season?
eternal optimist or else we wouldn't do this role, mate. <laughs> There's enough people telling you you can't do things that if you don't go into any challenge believing you can be successful and believing that you can bring success, then, you know, there's no point being in it. So, you know, I kind of, I was under no illusions of the enormity of the challenge, but at the same time I was, you know, bullish in myself that we could we could accomplish something here. And um, and in terms of the supporters, you know, I've said all along, you know, they, they've got the right to feel the way they want to and it's up to us to change that if we don't feel you know if there's a negativity amongst them it's up to us to to turn that around it's not up to them to just sort of blindly um they'll always you know have this eternal faith in their football club but in terms of us the the people who represent it uh, we've got to prove to them that there's something to get behind there and um you know sunday's an opportunity for us to to begin to do that and then hopefully um you know that positivity um you know transfers to to our next home game and then you know because the energy that they provide the players will be enormous in us trying to achieve what we need to ali and um Obviously, Harry's been wearing the armband uh, in your pre-season matches. Hugo doesn't seem to have got plans. Have you decided on your captain going for Yeah, I have, mate. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not telling you. No, no. Um, no look, we'll, 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 we'll kind of go through that process um, tomorrow. Um, yeah, as you said, I think... Again, uh, knowing that sort of Harry wasn't going to be here was something that, you know, I kind of had on my radar... Um, I'm not a massive one on sort of, you know, having an outstanding captain. I think leadership is very much um, a thing that's very transferable amongst the group. You know, your youngest player can can show leadership skills, but it's about sort of creating a, a culture and environment um, that's driven by the players and, and the people you have in those kind of positions, captain or leaders, um, whatever sense of the word you want, I have to drive that and, and sort of, you know, that's that's been my that part of my brief here in the early bids, just to observe, you know, the players and how they interact and, you know, the, the kind of, um, you know, environment they've set for themselves and, and, and which players seem to take the lead in that and then, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll sort of go through the formalities of that um, probably tomorrow. Um, I'll rephrase this next question slightly. Is Sonny a, a strong candidate for that role? Well, it's not like, you know, it's not like a leadership poll. We're not having votes or anything. It's just, you know, there's there's obviously some, some people here who, some players who have been here who have already contributed outstandingly to the club. But again, it's not, for me, it's not just about experience. It's not just about playing ability. It's It's... It's as much about the person they are as anything else and how it's going to represent us as a football club and how it's going to represent the playing group. So there's all kinds of things that um, will go into it. And, um, you know, from my perspective, oh, I'm really comfortable now that with the group we have here that we'll, we'll have a really strong leader out of it and, and, and hopefully some some lieutenants alongside him. Just a quick question about the future of another player. Even Perisic has been playing quite a lot for you in pre-season and obviously contributed a lot. Does he have a future on you? Yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason why he doesn't. Like I said, he, he's, he's been playing and he's been playing very well. Um, you know, I'm, you know I've, obviously I've followed Ivan's career for a very long time and um, he's he's an absolute professional. He, the way he looks after himself physically, he's in unbelievable condition and uh, and he's had a really strong pre-season for us, you know, both um, games, training. So, yeah, he's you know, definitely... Uh, got a future with me uh, or with the football club more importantly okay we've only got a couple of minutes left of this section so we go gentlemen in the suit Alan <coughs> and George please hi there it's uh, Matt Gray with BBC Sport um, you mentioned you had a conversation with Harry when you first arrived at the club obviously you had a vision uh, you said his ambitions as well but did you try and convince him to stay no I, I didn't see the point in that because um Whatever I was going to say was going to be irrelevant to what he felt being here for the last month. You know, I could I could sort of plan this grand vision, but I'm sure he's heard it all before. It's what it's how people feel and and you know what they see and perceive as they as they train with the group and the way the environment changes that that has a bigger effect. So for me, that was more. Um, not that I was going to make a pitch for him, but you know, my feeling was, you know, what we'll get to know each other over the next month. That's the best way to sort of navigate this early bit of um, 
you know, the, our sort of relationship uh, as manager and player. Um, but having said that, um, um, in my mind, after that initial conversation, it seemed to me that Frank, you know, Harry had sort of made up his mind that, as I said, if the clubs agreed, he would go. If not, he was also happy to stay. You know, it wasn't like he, um, you know, was kind of forcing it on me. You know, and he was very professional about it. And I tried to treat him with the respect that a player of his standing deserves. Yeah, look, I again, I've been around long enough not to get frustrated by these things because I, I, you know, I, various parts of my career I've been involved in the negotiation side, and it's never, it's never a simple process. I mean, all us managers would love it if it was, but. And you're talking, like I said, one about you know about one of the greats of this football club. There's got to be some um, torment in there in turmoil in terms of on every side about this decision. It's not it's not a real simple one. So whilst yeah, it would have been great to to sort of have it clarified earlier. I wasn't. I didn't feel like um, in my mind that it was that was going to happen. It was always going to be kind of borderline. I think. The one thing we've tried to stay strong on, I think, on all sides is that we don't want to go into the first game with, you know, still um, stuff undecided because then it gets even murkier, if you put it that way. So it's happened, um, like I said, hopefully confirmation over the next few hours and then we can move forward, Harry can move forward. No, again, I think I said earlier that I don't need assurances. We've, we've, we've been working on that premise already. So there's nothing that's changed today from yesterday or a month ago when I started. Um, we've had a clear idea about what we wanted to do in terms of um, you know, bringing in players to bolster the squad, the areas we needed to bolster. Um, like I said, there still needs to be some movement out. That's still... You know, um, a big part of what we need to do, and and within that context, um, you know, we'll wait and see how all that unfolds. And there's still um, areas where we can manoeuvre to, to to do some business, but it, it, that that's not because of what happened today. That's that's sort of been planned from day one. Final one for me, sir. What does a successful season look like for you now? Uh, the same thing. It, looks for me yesterday nothing changes you know I, I said we, we will try and build a team that hopefully um, you know plays football that um, excites our fans and brings success to this football club and the ultimate measure will be our fans they'll tell me um, whether they're satisfied or not with what I've done and uh, that will soon be relayed to the people here and to you guys and you'll all be able to have a, a running sort of um, you know, uh, measure of how I'm going, but uh, I'm not sort of putting any specific goals to it. I think um, I think I know what I want to achieve, and that is create a football team that um, you know excites our fans. Thank you. Thank you. Time. As we learn later in news, when it comes to Harry Kane, he's a record-breaking player. He was a pivotal for this club, but despite that, he wasn't able to bring the Spurs fans any trophies. So, in the post-Harry Kane era, what does your side need to do to change that? Yeah, look, I, and I think that's a you know a little bit unfair on on on, on Harry as well because you know they've, they've got close a couple of times, but obviously you know in this business that's that's the reality of it. Until you lift the trophy, that kind of thing's always um, you know sort of branded against you, but that doesn't diminish his contribution. And and I think it's only fair that you know on a day like today that that our supporters you know, do have a sense of mourning and, and loss because irrespective of you know the 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 lack of success of the club he's you know he's been a hero to them and and I think he'll continue to be so but again that him going doesn't change my vision of what I'm going to try and bring to this football club you know it's 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 fairly obvious that um, a club of this stature um, has to find a way to win things and I think you can do that in many different ways um, I have a very specific way of trying to bring success to a football club, this football club or any football club, and that is you know, 
playing the game a certain way and that's what I'm going to focus on and that's all I, I've ever done in my career is um, get the teams to play a certain way because I know it brings success and that's my sort of um, you know uh, challenge here as well and uh, you know hopefully moving forward that not just the fans but the players themselves and everyone involved in the football club will see that you know the road we've embarked on will, will hopefully give us the opportunity for success because uh, that's all you can do you can put yourself up there to try and be successful nothing's guaranteed but we want to be in a position where we, we, we can bring success to this football club but does the loss of Harry Kane give your project more time knowing that the fans will understand, maybe the board will understand how such a pivotal part was previously <coughs> starting a fresh journey with a new mm. Yeah, I don't know if you lot would be that forgiving, mate, to give me some more time. Um, I, I think it's just it's just the nature of football these days that, you know, we, we all we all love... Look, the reality is it does take time, but, you know, none of us know how much we have. And I, I've worked on that premise my whole career. I've, you know... I've said before, I go into every job thinking I'll be there for life, knowing that I won't be. You know? So when that end date is, who knows? But that's not going to affect what I'm going to try and put in place. And I don't expect people to to sort of cut me slack or, or you know give me um, time if I'm just bumbling along and making mistake after mistake. They need to see evidence. Oh, I think that's that's always the best way forward if you want to build something that's long and that's sustainable and, and might take a bit longer is that along the way people actually see progress rather than me just telling them it's going to come after three months six months or 12 months if they could see it feel it then that buys you the time because they can actually see what you're saying happening rather than like i said me saying well you know what can i have an extra six months now because harry's gone why should they give me extra six months if i'm not doing my job hopefully they're they're seeing that anyway and, and saying, well, let's go another six months, let's go another year because we like what we see and we're getting closer to where we want to be. And finally, as you said, some fans will feel like they're mourning today, other fans will be just wondering what's going to happen in the future. What's your message to those fans? Yeah, again, as I said earlier, I, I, I'm not going to tell them how to feel. They need to, to go through that process themselves. Um, and I guess for me and the players, what what's really important now is that you know, when they see that their team play, that that fills them with hope and belief that potentially we can build something that they're going to be, um, you know, proud of. So um, I, I'm just really reticent to tell people how they should feel. You know, if they're not feeling great about things, that's that's their right. There's there's probably a reason for that, maybe a good reason for that. Um, I, what I want to do is hopefully give them something tangible on the field that that excites them and I think if we do that um, you know they'll they'll find their own way to get to the place where we're all sort of united and, and feeling good about the prospects of the football club thank you man. okay we'll end the broadcast with George please oh, yeah. we'll back here. Hey, Um, yeah, he's fit. There's no no issues with him. I mean, I, you know, we didn't play against Shakhtar, but he was never going to. To be honest, we were always going to sort of play two different 11s, um, and he picked up a slight knock of training. So, but he he got through the Barca game really well. Um, yeah, look, Richie's a you know a fantastic player. He's um, I said before, he's got some really strong attributes that fit in well with the way I want my team set up. He was a really you know, he's a hard worker for the team, apart from, you know, obviously you know, doing the stuff that he needs to in front of goal. But, um, you know, there's all aspects to his game. And as you said, he's, you know, he's, he's represented his country at a World Cup, uh, not an insignificant thing. And and sometimes when things thing like this happen, opportunity exists and it's up to somebody to step through that door, whether that's Richie or anyone else, you know. Um, that's all you can ever ask for in football and it's opportunity and he you know, him and, and the others. Um but like I said, I wouldn't be expecting one player and it's not the way we'll be set up to, to sort of cover the absence of, of Harry. It's about it's about the collective how we can become a really, you know, strong offensive force. Um with the players we have, and, and you know, we do. We have, we have some really fantastic attacking players, of which Richie's one of them. Yeah, 
Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, every sort of new challenge is, um, you know, the beginnings are always uh, exciting. Um, it's the way I see them. And, and obviously, when the real stuff starts, particularly, uh, you know, in, in the league, then you know that uh, you're up and running. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, we'll have yeah, probably... Yeah, two or three that will be making their, their debut potentially, um, which I'm sure they're excited about as well. So, um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. As I said, we all us managers are deep down eternal optimists and uh, I'm sure there's uh, 18 Premier League managers who are looking forward to the first game. Uh, we'll assess our feelings after the first game and see how many of us are still bullish about it. OK, we'll end the broadcast section.